Set in 1959, Dead Poets Society tells the story of some teenage boys studying at a strict and confirmed Welton Academy and how their new English teacher and alumni, Mr. Keating, teaches them poetry using unorthodox ways. Mr. Keating, played by Robin Williams, wants to explore and sensitize his students to the raw reactions, passion, feelings, and thoughts of poets as they reflect on love, disappointment, delight, relationships, nature, and life in general. He wants his students to aspire to indulge such feelings, thoughts, and express them in their own words. Clearly, this desire conflicts with the controlled, distant, and uninvolving process of the analysis advised in the student's textbooks, a method which leads to exam success, but which ultimately failed to elucidate the meaning and purpose of the poems studied. There is no doubt that the teachers and parents of these young boys want what is best for them, in their view. But at what point should the character aspirations and hopes of these youngsters themselves to be taken into account? This existential conundrum with repercussions on both sides of the debate is beautifully and sympathetically depicted here, though it is to be taken extremes for dramatic effect. The dead poets were dedicated to sucking the marrow out of life. Dead Poets Society is a movie that narrates the story of some teenage boys of 1959 in a prep school named Welton Academy, where the students are bound to follow plenty of rules and regulations. Mr. Keating, who is an alumni and an ex-student of the same school, comes as the new English teacher and starts teaching them in unconventional, unorthodox and non-conforming ways. He also inspires them to write their own poetry and rejects the idea of mechanical education as he asks the students to tear the introduction page of the textbook that explains poetry. As the movie progresses, the audience along with the boys find out that Mr. Keating used to be a part of the Dead Poet Society during his youth days. The idea or the notion of the poetic society inspires them so much that it makes them to make a group like that among themselves. Peter Weir has connected a lot of plots where we get to see Knox's love life, Neil's love for acting, Charlie's affection for girls, and so on. Later we see Neil finds his ambition to choose his career as an actor, but he is stopped by his father, and the pressure ultimately forces Neil to take his own life, and that changes the life of his friends abruptly. Mr. Keating was expelled from the school because he was blamed for Neil's death. Despite all these negatives, the movie ends on a positive note as Todd and some other students standing on their desk call them by saying, Oh Captain, my Captain, which is a callback to Mr. Keating's nickname. It also shows that the things Mr. Keating taught these young boys will remain The theme and very purpose of education is explored as John Keating, a newly arrived but experienced teacher of English at Wilton Academy School for Boys, makes use of unconventional strategies and methods to engage and inspire his students. These techniques end up causing some friction and contrast with the conservative principles and teaching method employed at Wilton Academy, whose core values are tradition, excellence, discipline, and honor. But to foster them, Welton appears to advocate conformity by molding the individual with robotic learning that promotes the creation of model citizens and ensures the success in society. This contrasts sharply with Keating's views that the purpose of education is to allow or enable an individual to think for himself or herself. He also encourages passion, personal fulfillment and ambition based on one's own aspirations and not the expectation of others. This does not, however, mean their abandonment of old principles and values, but it does imply recognition of personal freedom of choice and the need to adapt. Now, when you read, don't just consider what the author thinks. Consider what you think. Rip it out! Rip! Keating 
Watson's convictions are embodied in his instruction to take out the introduction in a textbook devoted to the study and analysis of poetry. The said introduction promotes a somewhat mechanical means of measuring the worth of the poem and Keating rejects it entirely. These boys are sent to boarding school to develop and evolve but in a particular mold and experience the age-old pressure to please their parents and conform to others' expectations. In contrast with this pressure to conform, Keating encourages the boys to look within themselves and recognize and explore their own thoughts and feelings. The effect varies from individual to individual, but all make choice, all gain, and all come into conflict with the status quo. Keating introduces his students to the concept of carpe diem, which means to seize the day. He draws attention to the fact that the student days are numbered and that they should make the most of their life and opportunities presented to them. Now let's talk about carpe diem. What is carpe diem? As you can see on the screen, carpe diem is a Latin phrase that comes from the Roman poet Horace and its literal meaning is pluck the day or seize the day. In simple words, carpe diem means enjoy yourself while you have the chance. Carpe diem is perhaps the most famous quote from the movie Dead Poets Society. Professor John Keating delivers these words to his students on the first day of school at Welton Academy, symbolizing his unorthodox approach to education and his desire to inspire his students to make their lives extraordinary. It is important to understand what Keating means by seize the day, what kinds of lives Keating wants his students to live and how Keating's philosophy of life is different from the celebrated at Welton Academy. The tragedy of Dead Poets Society is that some of Keating's students misinterpret his celebration of life, originality and the carpe diem mindset to mean that a life without creativity and originality is worthless and not worth living. Neil Perry, one of Keating's most eager disciples, begins a career as an actor, inspired by his teacher's encouragement to seize their day. But when his father, Mr. Perry, finds out that Neil has been neglecting his studies for theatre, he forbids Neil from performing, and Neil is so distraught that he kills himself. Neil's tragic mistake is to twist Keating's idea because we are going to die let's live life to the fullest into a far grimmer idea because we can't live life to the fullest we should die keating's carpe diem philosophy is above all a celebration of life over death while neil's misinterpretation of carpe diem leads to his death keating inspires many of his other students to lead lives structured around their own unique passions ignoring the dictums of their parents and other welton teachers oh captain my captain this is one of mr keating's first lines in the film dead poet society and of course one of the most famous it is a gold mine of all sorts of literary references Keating spouts great poetry like There's No Tomorrow, but rarely gives the audience a book to go by if we wish to explore them for ourselves. So, here is a list of the most prominent extracts and where they came from. The first stanza of this poem begins with Gather ye rosebuds while ye may, and is read aloud by Pitts and Mr. Keating's first class to show the transience of life. Written by 17th century poet Robert Herrick, it is essentially the poetic translation of Carpe Diem and contains three more stanzas not included in the film that are definitely worth reading. Otherwise known as the excerpt that is to be read at the beginning of every Dead Poet Society meeting, this work by Thoreau is part of a larger book which explores the link between transcendentalism, nature and independence. Acting as Mr. Keating's preferred nickname and his first reference in the film, this poem is probably the one that stands out the most. This poem was a response to the assassination of Abraham Lincoln in the year 1865 and explores grief and sorrow with Whitman's usual striking language. This scene might be remembered as the one in which the boys dance in a circle chanting just before they exit the cave. Believe it or not, this poem is actually intended to be chanted like this, 
as it belongs to a genre of singing poetry. During one of Mr. Keating's unconventional lessons, three boys are told to walk around to the courtyard at the leisure. This results in the boys unknowingly synchronizing the steps to a marching beat, which Keating then uses to prove his point about the dangers of conformity. At this point, Robert Frost makes an appearance to add to this point with his famous line from the poem. Robert Frost said, Two roads diverged in the wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Buck's end speech was especially moving with the presence of Neil's father in the audience, and the headdress worn served as a powerful symbol in the coming tragic scenes. As you all already get to know that we are discussing about the Carpe Diem theme and now I will analyze more about the uses of Carpe Diem theme. In literature I will take some examples from the very famous poems. First one is Andrew Marvel's To His Choir Mistress. To His Choir Mistress is perhaps Marvel's best known poem. It is also the most commonly cited example of a Carpe Diem poem. The poem is based on a conceit or a type of comparison. It is a beautiful love poem based on a gentleman wing his mistress hoping to convince her to sleep with him. The unnamed mistress refuses and his response is to tell her that if he had enough time, he could have spent entire centuries admiring her beauty and innocence, but he doesn't. The another one is to the virgins to make much of time by Robert Herrick. To the virgin to make much of time is another very well-known example of a Carpe Diem poem. Carpe Diem actually means seize the day. The poem begins with the speaker starting that women should do everything she can while young to take advantage of the love others want to give her. She will be more appreciated while she is young and beautiful therefore she will gather her rosebuds or the things in life she needs before time takes over. One time has made its mark on her she will be lost to happy possibilities of life. The whole movie is centered around how Mr. Keating's teaching have affected the students in their day-to-day -day life. Neil Perry was one of the students who took his classes about Carpe Diem very seriously and joined a theater group without telling his parents. His parents on the other hand wanted him to be a doctor and always put pressure on him by saying how lucky he is to getting the opportunities that his father couldn't even dream of. The pressure of choosing between his parents' dream and his own messed him up and he couldn't take it anymore which led him to commit suicide. This movie portrays very clearly how the students are unable to think freely and make their own identity just because of the parents who keep putting pressure on their children without even thinking about them. We can also see the character Todd Anderson who has a very shy and confirming nature because of which he couldn't even stand up for himself in front of his parents who want him to be a doctor just like his elder brother. The above incidents actually give the justification of the quote, school kills artists. And here the parents are also involved. The loneliness Neil felt because of his parents. The helplessness he went through is something unforgettable and apparently that was not tolerable for him. This movie is nothing but the harsh reality check of the students and the messed up education system. Neil Perry reminds us of the one friend we all have who despite of all the warnings and precautions carries out with what he does best that is to defy the society and carry on with what he's good at. The movie portrays the emotions of all the teenagers with their hormones pumping through their bloods very beautifully. Though the film is a bitter story about the truth and demerits of the education society of the modern world. After discussing all the motives and themes like tradition, discipline, freedom of choice, coming of age, carpe diem, rebellion, individuality and discovering the mutation of filmmaking, we can say dead poet society teaches us to lead lives of passion and conviction, mindful of the fact that the story of our lives, the script, is our to write but the ending has long been decided.